I'm Jan Strieve, and I'm the Chief Undergraduate Advisor in English and also the Honors Program Director, and I teach in the English Department. And I'm Randall mm -hmm. Milker, I'm Director of Undergraduate Studies right now, and will be head of the department next year. I think there's a range of things that are going on. One are the specializations we offer that are kind of writing oriented and also uh, technology oriented or new media um, oriented. So basically helping students develop technical skills and also writing skills and writing portfolios that can have a practical outcome after they graduate. And then we've always been advising students um, for teaching. So we work really closely with the, the secondary teacher education programs. We offer a careers workshop every semester, which is very um, kind of hands-on, and that's the course I teach. And so students are um, re researching vocations, they're going to, actively going to career fairs, doing networking, and uh, things really can gen genuinely happen for them in that class because they're kind of being made to go out and do things that they wouldn't do on their own time because they're really busy. They get a chance to really dig in and explore vocations that they might not have been thinking about. And I think that they find out in this class that there are, that really the opportunities for the English major are endless. I feel like I'm doing a little bit more whole picture advising maybe, or where students are coming in talking about their anxiety about the future and I think there is a tendency for students to just sort of buckle down and do your coursework and that becomes your reality and your world and, and then you leave until the, until the last moment any kind of career considerations. It's your last semester and you're a senior. But as a department we, we do get a little frustrated that students don't know everything that we're offering. They, they do tend to graduate and give us negative uh, evaluations. They tend not to know about the things that we do if we're offering career events. So all of that ends up being a little bit frustrating and we're trying to, as a department, figure out how we can do better outreach and increase the chances for that kind of whole picture advising to happen early on. The mechanism, I mean, our, our students yeah. graduate and they disappear sometimes right. and, right. and they, they, don't, right. not, they don't have a lot invested in getting back to us and saying, hey, I got a job. Yeah. So yeah. we don't know what, yeah. what the story is. Yeah. We've wondered yeah. about like having a, a, a rack code. You can't register, register every until semester. until you see an advisor. Right. But I don't know if we... I don't know if we really want to do that. That would be a lot to put a hold on. And we thought maybe we'd do it at a certain point in their undergraduate career to make sure they come in at least once for advising. But I think logistically, we just never really worked it out. We're trying to, in our classes, make it more explicit what kinds of skills they're learning that they can actually use out there. We've done more and more as I think the years have gone by, conscious of the fact that, for one thing, that our enrollments are dropping, but then conscious also of the fact that um, our students are concerned about getting jobs. I think they get jobs, and, and I think that they get jobs often in areas that they would never have thought of before. Mm -hmm. And it always seems to me that we have to expand our students' imagination of what they might do mm -hmm. out there. The people like CEOs, they will still say, we want, we want people who can critique, who can analyze, and who can write, who can communicate, because they can train them to do the little mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. on the job. Mm -hmm. They want somebody who's smart. And I look at my students, and they're smart. Mm -hmm. and they can write, and I don't really have any, any um, worry about their getting a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.